Hello and welcome to uh, Spreadsheets for Accounting, AAT Level 3, uh, Chapter 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this up into um, at least four videos because there's a lot going on in Chapter 3, really. Uh, the first bit we're going to do is, is the advanced formatting. Uh, but then it gets on, on into, um, uh, it goes into cells and worksheet protection, uh, which we'll do as a separate video. Uh, conditional formatting we'll do as a separate video because it starts to do a lot of logical, um, uh, logic, uh, tests in that one um, much more much bigger than uh, the bit that it just says in there uh, data validation is a separate one and then we'll do some uh, we'll do some questions so um, well, you are going to be required to format using borders in the exams highly likely um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this here um, right now you can um, do this in a couple of ways here's the border thing up here on the ribbon and you click down there so you've got the normal some normal ones here or more borders here and if you open up that then you've got uh, the way in which you can get to it from right click so you could do it that way get there or alternatively we can right click format cells and it brings it up there as well so you know where we normally have this number and this alignment and we've got our fonts as well here we also have a tab called border okay now they're going for a dashed version in here so we've got a dashy line that one there now, if you want to get this to work in this uh, part here, what you have to do is you have to click on that first and you also have to hit either here or these things down here. So you're sort of building uh, your borders. So you'll go like that and that and that and that to build it. Or alternatively, you just hit that. Then you have to hit OK. Don't forget that. And there you see the dashed border appeared. Now, if I wanted to do it in this way, I could go right border there and then bottom border there. And essentially you just build your borders how you want them to, to work out. Um, and that's really all the borders are. You just have to keep sort of just building them. If you didn't like it and you want to get rid of them, no border. You have to sort of wipe them out. Um, there, so that's how you build it. You've got these thick borders, double bottom. You've got these various other ones. And if you can't find anything in there, you go and hit that, that one. You're going to, and you either get into it going from that and then more or alternatively you go into it by highlighting what you want to and then uh, format cells like that okay so that is uh, using borders you're definitely going to get you're going to see that in, a, in an exam um examiner quite likes that okay um within it as well um we have got line color so you can change the line colors if you want to. Okay, so that's where that would be found on the bottom of page 65. Okay, using font and fill color. So we've got these two cells here. Um, it's made it a hard border now, so I've got all borders like that. Um, and to change the font color, I select the required cells. The font colors here. Choose a colour that I require. Okay, well, let's go that purpley thing. Um, and select a fill colour. This is the fill colour here. Now, you will get probably a lot of um, set these things to fill colour. So I've sort of put that as a green. If you wanted to find another thing, then you'll find, you know, there's the colour. Sometimes it comes up as a big colour wheel. Uh, sometimes it comes up as, as this here. Okay. So that is uh, font colour and fill colour. Now, that's where you pr prepare the fill manually. So you fill these cells in here, and I click on there, and I fill this thing out manually. Later on in this chapter, um, and later on probably in, in a, couple of, a couple of videos, uh, we will be doing this where Excel does it for you based on a set of equations. Okay, so, and if I wanted to go to that, if I go into here as well, on this one here, um, I've got more colors available uh, and if I click into it here as well in the format cells so if I right click and I've got the fill in here I can change this so sometimes um, let's say I wanted to highlight this and do a, um, a risk register and I wanted to sort of show how internal audit reviews had impacted on a particular risk what they were saying was were the systems working or not and one of them had gone really well and one of them had gone badly so i wanted it to be both green and red and um, i might actually put some patterns in here um 
let's say a red and a pattern style um, and you can have like little fill effects and you can change these things around with two colors so color one could be red color two could be green um, and you're just messing about with this stuff until you get what you like really um, and that's pretty much all it is you can see I sort of twiddled around with that and, and, and you just play around with it um, in the exam you'll be told exactly what to do it won't, it won't be that that hard or complicated but you can see at the bottom here uh, they produce some form of pattern um, if I go into this format cells in here there is a pattern um, pattern style here which was something like this uh, with more colors uh, the fill effects being set up uh, with a couple of colors and that was how that, that bottom thing was set up okay so that's where you find that right advanced cell alignment on page 67 onwards so let's write it in then or oh, let's get produce another little if it's so uh, this is a piece of text text to illustrate my fingers are a bit off today illustrate word wrap hmm. okay it's actually wrapped to text um, okay so we've got this here it's going over there now why would we not just leave that one here well let's say we have something next to it which is that you can see how it's now disappeared we want it to, to be um, to exist and we want to see the whole thing so let's make it a little bit we could make it a little bit bigger all the way across there but that might be hopeless if it's taken up too long and something below it is is, is really small so we what we can do instead if you go into it right click so that's one format cells and here we've got our options haven't we alignment will be one and wrapped text is here we've done that previously in, in the last i think it was in the last chapter so wrapped text in there and you'll see now it's now come from being across there to there so that it's a bit, it didn't, doesn't matter. The next, next cell doesn't, doesn't go into it. So that's quite important. Uh, justify. Okay, so here we are. Um, we're into the justify text. So we go into here. Um, so we've got some, some things that are wrapped to text. Um, we're going to do it either justify it there, left, right, there, which is how that one could work. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go into it and format cells and we're going to go into the alignment tab in here and we are going to, what we're going to do here now. It says on the alignment tab, selection for horizontal. We're going to pick instead of the left, right and centre, we're going to pick our justify here. Okay. Now what that one is going to do is you see how it's now just shifted the words across a little bit and lined it up on the left hand side. It's neater if you're trying. I mean, really, it's more for word that, um, but still, it's there. Um, we've got it available to us. Orientation. Um, sometimes you might have a whole series of things done or, or a whole series of items for particular years, and you might want to have this. So let's go through here. Okay, we'll set this this sheet up, and we've got year here and month here and we've got january into the little square little box in the edge december here yeah, though um and now we're going to merge these cells here so we highlight the cells right click format the cells and merge them okay and let's put 2015-16 in there it's a bit not really nicely um, in the middle. I uh, can't really get it up there. Um, what we're we going to do then instead? Well, let's go and right click, format the cells, and here's the orientation of the text. Uh, we've decided we're going to go for that one. Okay, no, let's orientate it the other way around. Let's go to there. Okay, and then let's put that in the middle and middle it again. And there we go for that one. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Um, okay. 
Uh, so we just had that that one there. Um, there was orientation on the home um, on the home ribbon, but you tend not to really use that 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 particular orientation. It's it's always it's always that that one they doing the right the um the right click and then format cells. Right, shrink to fit rather than cells. So uh, let's go back to our other one here. Uh, let's switch the wrap to texting off. Oh, let's switch that off. Got cells. Oh, there's no wrap to text off. Delete. Excel's been a little bit odd there. Let's just copy that down to oh, and do that. Grab hold of that. Control C. Okay, so we've got something here. We want to try and shrink this down now into this cell. So go into the cell, right click on the selection, select format cells in here, into the alignment tab, and then we've got this shrink to fit version here. And there, and press OK. And see how it's now shrunk it down. Um, you're tending, you're going to tend not to ever use. I've, uh, I've not seen an example where that's that's been required, uh, but it's in there just in case you needed to do that. Um, the problem is if you use it as a bit of a cheat in your um, tend to use it in a, as a bit of a cheat in the titles, but it just looks a bit ugly when it's printed out. Okay, so let's now see if we've got any information that we can. Yep, let's get back to this one then. Usefully, they sort of seem to produce use the same kind of examples, just in different directions. Let's change the fonts on my way back to the back. Take out the fills, no fills. Okay, eighty thousand, eighty, eighty thousand. 90 and somewhere along the lines somebody decided to put some totals in there as well okay all right just so we've got something to just line up on uh, right so we might miss to move the, the totals column before the months so we want to move this from here and we're going to put it here okay so we're now on page 72 uh, alternately we might want to move the rows around uh, so Salaries becomes for the stationary rows, right? So how are we going to do that then? Okay, so right click on the column here and you see how I come into here on that column side I, I sort of oh sorry left click on the column not right click so left click on it so I've, I've shaded it up there I've left clicked on that one if I clicked here I'm just clicking on cells I have to actually hit in the H there if I'm doing that one right click cut and you see now it's dancing around cutting its way or, or ready to do something Click on there, see I hit the B again, and that's going to be insert cut cells. Okay, so that's how we would move that around. It's never going to really work um, in terms of being particularly um, uh, complex, this. And so you won't be trying to do anything harder. In practice, in reality, if you've got a very, um, a very complex spreadsheet, um, it tends to not go quite well. Um, if you are using lookups as well, the lookups will not track and move and compare uh, and move around and um, compared to what you would normally sort of see with spreadsheets when they move around so that was um a, uh, a cut there and insert cut cells or alternatively we could let's move a row then so we were want we wanted to move wasn't it the salaries um well, the salaries become before the stationary or alternatively it says insert row in here and then just drag that down to there that's one way that's another way of doing it and then deleting out this row up here okay so i'll do that again for you just so you can see exactly what happens all right i hit in here where it's shaded right click insert the row i then left click in that and i've highlighted out the row i get myself on the green line you can probably work on the, on the green line at the top as well but i get myself on it and I put my finger down on the left mouse and now I start dragging and you'll see now it hits the next point I want I right click back in there I delete the row okay so that was uh, how to do those two um, 
actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that, that missing column back in there. Let's say I wanted to leave it there, but I'm just going to hide it. So it says hide row, right click, hide. Okay. Um, so which one are they trying to hide now? Uh, this totals one they decided to hide as well. So I right click and I hide. Okay. To unhide, I highlight both sides of that. Then I right click in it and I unhide. Highlight both sides, right click and unhide. Let me just sort of show you how this would work if you didn't get it right. So you right click, oh, well, so I right clicked over here somewhere. You see how it now disappeared and I'm away from it. So I've got to stay in it. I'm going to stay in that, that area and unhide from there. So often when people are doing that and think, oh, I'm not quite getting this right, it's because they've, slightly, they've not quite clicked on the right place. They're doing the right clicks, but just not in the right place. Okay. Specify um, row, height, and column width. So to set the column width, um, select the columns that I want to change. So let's, what was it, we're selecting this one here, here. Select in our format in here. So format cells, so right click in it, format cells. And there, I think where we go into, um, select format column width, a second, it's not that one, sorry. It, no, it's not. It is right click, and here's my right click and my format cells. Column width here, sorry, it's right click column width there. If you do that, then you can set the column width, width specifically. Now, what I tend to tend to use that for is if you want to try and hit um, a square. Um, so you want to try and do that now. Um, so I have now worked out that that is 17.86. I'm going to go here and I'll right click in here and row height there. If I change that to 17.86. Um, Oh, that's interesting. Column width. Oh, you have to just sort of play around with it until you get it to what it, it wants to change it to 11, does it, in the book? Right, okay, let's change it to 11. Okay. Not very helpful because that now just went and brought it back into that alignment there. Um, what you'll also see as well, though, is at the top, as I move it, it changes as well. So it moves it to whatever it needs to be without doing the column width. But if you had something specific that you really wanted to achieve, I think I've used it once when I wanted to try and um, have a Gantt chart almost looking like a map. Um, and it was trying to sort of, um, I used to try to lay out a building on in Excel um, and then to be able to move um, move rooms around within it. And it can be useful that to set it because you can then be setting things to scale. Um, but that's about all, all what I've sort of found. You actually had to use column width specifically. Okay. But to find that, Simply right and click in, in the um, in the letters and it's there. And similarly in the rows and it is there. Okay, that is the end of this question, this sort of section. I'm going to take you into cell and worksheet protection in the next next video. And um, thanks for listening.